So, it is within. The portal that brought you hither, and will take you home. May you and yours emerge triumphant. Make use of the knowledge you have gained, that your days in Elpis and our friend's sacrifice be not in vain. With Meteon free to pursue her designs, it is only a matter of time until the final days are upon us. We must be ready. From fortifying our defenses to securing our escape, there is much to be done. In spite of this, we cannot allow the report that set this calamity in motion to become common knowledge. Were the masses to learn the fates of the other stars, I fear the situation would spiral out of our control. I must carefully consider who can be trusted and bring them into the fold. Ordinarily, I wouldn't hesitate to call upon the Fourteen. However, it was the desire for a fair determination that drove Hermes to attempt to erase our memories. And were he made aware of his actions, there is no telling whether he would remain a friend or become a foe. Alternately, we might try to alienate him from the Convocation. Yet in doing so, we would deprive ourselves of a brilliant mind, who would be invaluable in the crises to come. Quite the dilemma. Which is why I must work independently of the Convocation. Regardless of how we proceed, if we are to permanently avert the final days, we must be equal to Hermes' challenge. We must prove that mankind is worthy to exist. And this hinges, I think, on how we confront the all-consuming despair that accompanies a senseless and seemingly inevitable end. Bewildered and divided, we would perish like the peoples of those celestial ruins. We could not hope to survive the final days, much less take the battle to Meteon at her nest. We must find a way to defeat despair, to unite and prepare as many as possible for the struggle ahead. Heavy will weigh the burden of guiding this legion of souls. Yet I have faith in mankind's potential. As long as he believes in himself, there is naught he cannot achieve. So I will not give up on him. On us. You may find your world to be very different. Or perhaps the erasure of our friend's memories has sown the seeds of a conjunction between us. We cannot know until the moment is at hand. So shall I strive to do my best, taking naught for granted as I walk my path. And I pray you walk with me to the end. As you move forward, so too will I, as will all, resolved to fight for the morrow. And when mankind has found the strength to stand against despair, we shall silence the song of oblivion. She who sings it will learn our journey is far from over. This I promise. Fare you well, my light of the future. Till we meet again.
From this day forth, I shall strive to bring honor to the seat of Fandani. Even now, I remember standing there, locked in a moment where the sky is aflame. Where stars fall as tears, and screams darken the seas. Where resignation rots the trees. Where terror twists magics into abominations. Such is the lament of they who have gone before. The song of they who tried and failed to create a better world. The song of the end. That which hides at the edge of the universe is no longer hope's creation. It is hopelessness incarnate. That day, mankind saw half of its number sacrificed to bring forth Zodiac. And covering the star in a shroud of ether, we forestalled the final days. Yet the cries echoed still. We wept for innocence lost, wailed for death inevitable. A reality too terrible to bear. And for too many, who sought comfort in gilded memories of joyful days and tranquil nights, wrong why must we suffer so it needn't be like this no there must be a way to restore things to the way they were to reclaim the perfect paradise we once had no my friends suffering exists and we cannot pretend otherwise no civilization, however great, could eliminate it. If we would live, we must accept it as our constant companion. Let us not seek to forget this tragedy. Let us carry it in our hearts, that we may grow stronger and know true happiness. We can't accept it. We won't accept it. It will be ours again. A world free of sorrow! 
No, it will not. For there has ever been sorrow. Mankind was but spared its biting sting for a time. So please, open your eyes to try and reclaim those lives we lost by sacrificing yet more isn't wisdom it is weakness no paradise is without its shadows if we cannot accept this truth and learn from our pain then our plight shall be repeated Mighty Zodiac, God born of our boundless faith, we bid you hear our prayer. Accept this offering of lives and deliver unto us the lives we once had. Deliver unto us the days of old, the days when the star was a font of love and we knew naught but bliss. You would destroy it? Our beautiful world? Lands that stretched on forever. Skies one could drown in. The heartbeat of nature, silent yet strong. And amidst it all, a people. Beacons of light and life. Laughter that warmed my heart like naught else before. They are my meaning and my purpose, my love. In spite of, or perhaps because of this, I choose to believe in mankind's potential, in his ability to find a way forward. So let there be no way back. From that temptation, I sunder us. No more shall man have wings to bear him to paradise. Henceforth, he shall walk. All is excruciating pain. I breathe fire and torment. I birth a world of suffering to mire and plague. In one fleeting moment, lives come and go, ever moving towards the unknown. 
And in that fleeting moment, they cry for the answer to the question. Why, given life, are they meant to suffer, to die? As fragmented, imperfect beings, yours is a never-ending quest. A quest to find your purpose, knowing your end is assured. To find the strength to continue when all strength has left you. To find joy, even as darkness descends. And amidst deepest despair, light everlasting. A conjunction has begun to form, an intertwining of your time and mine. When you truly understand what is at stake, and your journey has prepared you to surmount the insurmountable, then shall I honor the promise made in another time, another age.
No. 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 We were promised an escape. Not of the same room we fled. I shall not meet my final days here in this blasted waste. Calm yourselves. Your panic is our greatest enemy. Come, we must build a line of defense. How? Leave the fighting to us, Father. You must lead the people to safety. I can handle this pair. You shall tend to the refugees. Let us be about it. <laughs> As you wish, my little lord. Single fiend escape! Wait, that's... Euless and the army. So, you've recovered then? In time enough to be of aid, for once. We can speak of it more later. For now, we must fight! To repay your salvation in kind, or with better! For Garlimald has her pride! Of that I've no doubt. Savius, the Imperial Army. Oh. I had hoped to take all of them down at once. Think a withdrawal might be in order? Oh, sod that. You know who would never abandon these people to their fate. To be devoured by their former friends. That'd be beyond cruel. These beasts must fall here and now. Well then, I'd say it's high time we threw caution to the winds. So long as you spare me the heroic sacrifices. Now, let's go! There's not the barest trace of ether. 
Maybe there really is no way to bring them back. Thank you for saving our lives once again. I remember you, from Purusha. You helped us there too, didn't you? Ah, you're from Palakar Stand. I'm glad you're still in one piece. Or you will be, once I see to that injury of yours. Look out! Get out of here! Quickly! I won't lose them! Not a one! This will be a brighter future! I won't let a madman's apocalypse ruin everything we've fought to achieve! Together, Alizé. You're embarrassing yourself. And in front of father, no less. You might never measure up to our champion. But we ask too much of him as it is. You mustn't let Eorzea's hero fight alone. I can look after myself, you know. Everything's in order, I trust. You must board without delay. The ship will depart ere long. Your offer to host us in Charlian is most appreciated. But will the final days not soon fall upon it as well? Your hesitation is not unwarranted. The Satrap entrusted me with your lives, yet I have failed your comrades. Nor are you wrong to fear that this corruption will continue to spread. I cannot promise you complete safety, even in my homeland. What I can promise is that I will do all in my power to protect you. That power is not inconsiderable. Even now, my countrymen are preparing the vessel that will deliver us to a sanctuary on the moon. Join us on our journey there, and beyond, to new horizons. Come to old Charlian, please.
We would be fools to refuse such a generous offer made in earnest. It seems they've a new destination. The people of Radzat Han have known too much suffering. The march to Garlemald will only bring them more, short though it may be. I quite agree. Fortunately, they have you to look after them. Yes. Well... Behind you! Just there! Xenos! Here! You'll be alright. Hurry to the airship. Why have you come? A heretofore unseen beast. Twas ripe for the slaying. Poor sport, alas. Unfit to temper my blade. Oh, for the love of... You cannot still be on about a rematch. That is and has ever been my sole concern. You, on the other hand, are fixated on a different quarry. Your passion pales before mine, yet neither hate nor despair seem sufficient to recapture your misdirected bloodlust. So, I hone my blade. And I wait. That's it. That's all you care about. Garlemald is in ruins. Our homeland, the nation you rule, is as good as gone. Along with so many of its people. Not just soldiers like us. Not only those who fought and killed for power and duty. Innocent civilians. Murdered by their own flesh and blood. Lost and confused as they breathed their last. While we who survived with our lives and minds intact were left to freeze to death. The Eorzeans tell me all this was your doing. You slaughtered your countrymen. You did. For what? For nothing in the end. So much wasted effort. You. You bastard! For your own sake, Eulus, you must control your anger. It will serve no one should it consume you and see you transformed.
Would you be happier had I a good reason? What? If my motives met with your approval, would you no longer resent the outcome? If so, then perhaps a beast's skin would suit you better. Duty, honor, morality. All constructs of convenience when put to proof. Surely the war taught you how easily power becomes the tool of the self-righteous. How the people's justice was merely a means to their ends? Yet you would ask me why. Ask any creature of this star and those above for answers, and they will tell you what suits their fancy. And they would be right to do so. What meaning there is to be found in the petty vicissitudes of your existence must be gleaned by you and you alone. Should you seek it in battle, in the fruitless pursuit of my demise, then come. Assume your rightful place, as a notch on my blade. You are a blight on the Garlean race. And there would be no more satisfying way to expunge it than by beating you to death! But I will not be party to another tragedy. I refuse to lose anyone else because of you. So go. Go! And may we never suffer your madness again! Perhaps you found meaning in living this way. I cannot deny you found strength. Yet if you only pursue your hedonistic pleasures and pay no heed to the plight of others, then no one will give you the time of day. You will never get what you want, not even the battle you pine for so dearly. You'll be alone for an eternity, and you'll deserve every agonizing second of it. We're ready to depart. The refugee ships will be leaving shortly, but I've asked mine to remain for the time being. There's room enough for you to join me on it, if you wish. Do contain your surprise. I needn't agree with the Scion's methods or intentions to acknowledge that their deeds are deserving of gratitude. We appreciate the offer, but might I ask why you are delaying your departure? I presume it is not solely for our benefit. I must visit Garlemald ere we return to Charlion. Having caused such an uproar, it is only meet that I explain myself to the Ilzabad contingent.
Allow us to accompany you then. We should be glad to facilitate, given our familiarity with all concerned. If you would like to join as well, Eulus, we can speak of recent events on the way. He'll be off to your seat on the forum next. No major injuries then. Good. I briefed the recovered soldiers and sent them on their way as quickly as I could, but nevertheless feared they would not make it in time. The additional support was invaluable. Your men saved more than a few lives. Though not all, I regret to say. I take it that I am addressing Lucia Junius. I am the Forum's envoy, Forchano Leveilleur. And you are owed an explanation for these most dire developments. Another trial wrought by the final days. I was beginning to suspect as much. You doubtless feel some consternation having been forced to abandon your original plan. But trust me when I say you were right to send the refugees elsewhere. Beasts have been sighted within the capital. Perhaps it was a stroke of grim fortune that the population was decimated beforehand as they've yet to appear in any great number, but in time. In any case, Maxima leads the remainder of the contingent in an effort to cull the creatures and evacuate the populace as we speak. Once the airships have taken to the skies, I pray your men can be persuaded to join him. You'll permit us to retain our weapons? I wouldn't have sent you after the Scions were I expecting you to stab them in the back. And I, for one, would not consider past transgressions more relevant than future contributions. Regardless of the circumstances that saw us at odds before, we need men of courage now, more than ever. We swore to defend Garlemald, and so we shall. It seems you have everything under control. You will excuse me then, for mine own duties await. A moment, Master Fortuno. You did desire to express your appreciation for services rendered, did you not? I did. Though if you intend to again ask that Charlian alter its course, you will find my gratitude insufficient. Tis nothing so onerous. I wish to hear the details of this grand endeavor of yours.
do you swear to listen and to learn, and not to embark upon some scheme to impede us? I swear. Any other, I would doubt, but you I trust to keep your word, for not once have you broken it. Very well. I will request that the Forum make you privy to our plans. You may await our summons at the Baldessian Annex, assuming the decision is in your favor. Does that suffice? It does. You have my thanks. Excellent. You can regale us with tales of your most recent sojourn to the first while we wait. Did you... hear something just now? banish even the darkest night and to this bitter climb bring warmth and comfort tis heartening to see such an assembly upon my return I thought often of you whilst I looked down upon our stars brilliance from the moon above Yes, but what are you doing here? And dressed like that? Aren't you cold? Verily. I fear for my health should I proceed to expound upon our purpose ere I procure more suitable garments. Then allow me to summarize. We're here because none of you lot are up there. Nor has anyone deigned to send word about any changes in the plans. It's food, is what it is. At least that's what I thought at first, but then folks got to wondering if you weren't in a spot of bother, so we decided to take matters into our own hands. Come down here and help, if our help be needed. So she says, but it's also something of a convenient excuse to visit a theorist. Uyanje made it sound absolutely marvelous. More so before the impending doom, but still. And it's not like there will ever be a better time! What with the aforementioned doom? Marvellous, they say, yet not an ounce of pudding to be found! I must suffer Uriange's inferior works no more! Hey! Maybe consider the plight of present company before you go blathering on about pudding and doom? Should you require any assistance with whatever, we are at your disposal. We were born from Heidelin's love for the lives of this star, so naturally we would much prefer to see them continue. Twiddling our thumbs up on the moon is hardly conducive to that, though, is it? Aye, not when you've all got such precious thoughts and feelings and hopes for the future deserving of more active preservation. Speaking to Oriange made us realize that while we've carried out our duties to the letter, 
We failed to fulfill them in spirit. From there, it was just a hop, skip, and a jump towards resolving to do better. So please, show us how. Help us help you. Forgive me, but are they... Thy distant collaborators, indeed. Hey, old fellow! Well met! You'd be a member of the Forum, would you? It's an honor and a pleasure to meet you at last. I'm Livingway, Hydlin's right paw! That last bit is very important. As am I, if I may humbly say so myself. I, uh, bid you welcome. To our star, Living Way. On behalf of the Forum, I thank you for traveling such a distance to meet us. As you have surmised, preparations for the Exodus have not proceeded as smoothly as we had hoped. I should be happy to personally escort you to our headquarters in Charlian, where you may advise us as you deem fit. "'Twas with reluctance that I set aside the great work of readying the moon for habitation. Be assured that I did so only after the Loperids made plain their earnest desire to come hither, and I myself felt a growing certainty that their contributions here would prove invaluable. "'Tis trite, perhaps, but I followed my heart. For a time, at least. Nevertheless, twas worth the journey to find present company well. Will thou attend us at the Forum and lend thine own wisdom? If that's all quite settled, can we start moving before Urianger catches his death? Even I'm freezing out here. Oh, I dare say you'll warm up quickly once you're aboard the airship. Sat shoulder to shoulder with our fur-covered friends. 